Welcome to the fifth and final episode of this podcast series on shifting career focus in an upside down workplace. This episode is entitled, A Long-Term Strategic Plan That Includes Career and Retirement Goals. If you're over 50, now is the right time to begin to think about retirement, not just as an end goal afterthought, but as a transition into a fulfilling, purposeful life, which means you'll need to give the part of the planning dealing with retirement equal weight to the work side of the plan. Taking into account your passions, interests, and a vision for a purposeful life. Even if your ideas are presently sketchy, it's still important to begin to incorporate a transition into your next act with your current one. More precisely said, if you're in your 50s, the end of your planning horizon needs to extend further than your career lifespan. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here's a chart I call optimum balance. I define optimum balance as a comprehensive plan that includes your career, a transition into retirement, and then retirement itself. This chart is actually a seesaw. The pivot fulcrum at the middle represents the beginning of your transition into retirement. Note, there is no timeline represented, as everyone is on a different timeline for this particular horizon. So if you work longer, the pivot point is higher up on the line. And when you're in retirement, the blue line at the top right hand side would move to the bottom like an earthbound seesaw. Now I'm assuming that on both sides of the chart, you'll want your objectives to be identical. And those are fulfillment, confidence, and financial security. You might be surprised to learn that those objectives when connected with retirement are not frequently met. A number of factors contribute to this, but arguably the biggest factor is a lack of planning. Ergo, the reason I've included work and retirement at opposing ends on the same chart. Because if you're in your 50s, you can't just look at the short term. And if you do, it's not just your retirement that will suffer. We know statistically that it can also jeopardize the state of your mind, as well as the state of your health for what might likely be decades. Another strong reason for early planning is this. It helps you face your fears about unsettled issues in relationship to moving forward with your life. Here, I've taken the chart and overlaid authenticity over the entire planning effort. Remember back in episode one, when we discussed the importance of being yourself, being your own master class, finding your true north. Authenticity is the primary goal for both your career and post-career life. In fact, I'd say that in this case, authenticity equals happiness. So let's talk about the components of a strong strategic plan. I like to keep it simple. The first step in the development of a good plan is to define your vision. A vision statement is a long-term, high-level snapshot of the desired future state that will serve as your North Star. Your vision serves as the rudder to keep you on course. A few sentences that embody your personal desires. Next up is values. Your values outline your fundamental beliefs on how you'll conduct yourself as you move forward in your life they'll most likely comport themselves to your current values. And in terms of outcomes, you'll want to define up front what success looks like to you. This can be the fun part. So use your imagination and don't be limited as you work on your goals and objectives. To help you get there, you'll need to be accountable to yourself and accountability is the watchdog of any successful effort. And you'll want to track your progress along the way include benchmarks that will help you know you're on the right track, perform status reviews every few months, then half year deep dives. In this way, you'll spot when your course corrections are necessary. It's helpful to see examples of other people's personal vision statements. You might have done vision and mission statements for work, but when it's for yourself, it's invariably more difficult. I selected to show these three because of their differences to demonstrate that you have wide berth in designing a vision statement. For instance, Oprah says her vision is to be a teacher and to be known for inspiring my students to be more than they thought they could be. Denise Morrison, Campbell Soup's CEO, writes that her vision is to serve as a leader, live a balanced life, 
and apply ethical principles to make a significant difference. Inversion Group founder Richard Branson states, to have fun in my journey through life and learn from my mistakes. Well, you can see how these statements are strongly connected to each person's authenticity and public persona. In fact, perhaps they could be called authenticity statements. A bit of a word about money. Money is a huge motivator. It's been my experience, however, that when I choose to do something simply because of money, it never works out. I know that baby boomers are suffering right now from financial losses and an overall lack of savings. I nevertheless believe it's critical during your post-career years to balance as much as possible the need for money with the need for personal happiness and fulfillment. Not all of us will have the finances we had wished for to pay for those bucket list items. So in order to not live with constant disappointment, it's important to base your plan on realistic goals, including a realistic assessment of your financial situation. Well, I wanna thank you for listening. I hope you found meaning in the information I presented. And I wanna thank Celine De Castro and her great team at Love Yourself Project for inviting me to participate. If you have any questions, you can email me at brightminded1, that's W-R-I-T-E, minded, number one, at gmail.com. Additional information about my coaching practice can be found on my website at www.boomerising.com. That's boomerising.com. Best of luck as you move forward with your career and with your retirement plans. Keep positive, believe in yourself, and be well.